Hi, Brad. <laughs> How are you going? Good. Good. Um, so we're talking about heavy vehicle driver assessment today. Yep. And I guess um, I, one of the things that I remember about the course was that um, we had the opportunity to drive lots of buses and forklifts and heavy vehicles and things. That was something I really found was enjoyable yep. about, about the course. Um, but what do you remember about the course and what did you get out of it? Well, I find that I found that to be really interesting too because um, I don't have a truck license, no. so um, learning about the trucks and buses and forklifts and uh, different types of machinery was, was really interesting. Uh, terminology used, yes. um, so we became familiar with um, you know talking at the client's level, so we can talk about yep. dogs and pigs and yes. dollies and all kinds of bits and pieces Sync like that. Mesh gearboxes. All of that. <laughs> um, yeah, road rangers and oh yeah, everything that goes on with that. So that was that was the big part of the course yeah. uh, for us because the the functional elements of an assessment are similar, um, but you know, getting in the trucks and getting in the buses and and so forth, you get to analyse what movements are required, and um, and then you're able to analyse what's actually involved from a physical point of view um, or mental point of view. Um, to be able to to do to do that functional task of driving. Yeah, because one of the things that I found surprising was that, um, or probably hadn't really clued into, as I knew that heavy vehicle driver assessment um, would probably involve lots of, I guess, manual driving, because I knew that you would need to do that to handle a load and things. But I didn't realise that on some of those really big trucks, they had, you had to you know, do the double D clutching with, yeah. the, with the clutch, and that the demands of trying to work out, I suppose, what gear you would need to be in depending on uphill, downhill, load, no load. Yeah, all of those elements and just how much movement's involved in, yes. in driving a truck. So how many gears you've actually got to go through. Yes. The, the coupling and uncoupling, uh, the hitching yes. of the trailer, all of those elements uh, about climbing onto the back of the truck and uh, getting underneath the truck to be able to pull the, the uh, pin out for the hitching of the trailer. All of those elements are uh, things that can easily be looked over if you're uh, if you don't actually do the course. I mean. Yeah, and I think that um, one of the things that's kind of um, it kind of became apparent, wasn't it, that it's not just actually just about the task of driving. No, when no. it's heavy vehicles. No, yeah. no, it's that it's the whole element of, of what's involved in the in the actual job because mm. more, more often than not, it's for a job. Yeah, and understanding what the actual job of the client is um, is a different element to. Uh, having somebody drive for their license yeah. uh, when it's a light vehicle. Yeah. Uh, this one, it's, it's a lot more job oriented. Uh, yeah. You gotta understand the job, uh, more often than not, that is. Um, yeah. yeah. Understanding the job that they've gotta do as well, so whether, they in, whether it involves loading and unloading, uh, whether it involves forklift elements as well, uh, mm. because uh, some people, all they do is sit in the truck. Yeah. And that's all they do. And other people have got to unload and, and load, and uh, depending on where they are, whether it's a small private company or a or a big company, or mm. there's lots of varying degrees of what's involved in their job. Mm. So, what would you say is the main difference between, um, I guess, a, a light vehicle, a normal driver assessment, mm -hmm. and a heavy vehicle driver assessment? Um, so, for a, for a car and a and a light vehicle, or well, depend depends on the on the uh, medical deficit um, of course because uh, I mean there's a lot about uh, steering and foot control and judgment of traffic in a light vehicle assessment and uh, heavy vehicle uh, assessments they have to get through that process anyway yeah. so then it's a lot more about uh, the physical demands uh, more often than not for the assessments that I do so there's back injuries or uh, physical injuries to the client more often than not um, but then there's elements of cognitive ele uh, assessments as well. So they could drive a, a car in light traffic quite well, but then the, physio uh, the mental demands of having to problem solve a bigger, heavier vehicle um, and their judgment um, is something else that you, that you have to be able to look a little bit further into because it takes a lot more effort to stop a truck yeah. and they've got to be able to judge that as well. So, from a process perspective, mm -hmm. how do you, how would you do a heavy vehicle driver? So if you've never seen the client before, but they were referred to you, and it says that they're a truck driver. Okay, so it starts with a light vehicle assessment. Yep. Uh, which is very similar to what we do all the time. Yep. Um, as an OT driver assessor, so you look at the vision and the 
physical and the cognitive elements um, to be able to, to drive a car, uh, but in the back of your mind you've got you know, that next step as well. So they need to be able to show that they can drive a, a light vehicle successfully. And then from there, uh, it's about analyzing what do they need to be able to do uh, for that heavy vehicle assessment or other type of assessment, um, and, and then pulling that apart and, and to see which elements they can and can't do. Um, it's, it's a, if we talk specifically about truck, we need to know that um, they've got to have three points of contact to be able to get in and out of a truck, for example. We need to know the elements of uh, being able to check the engine, the walk around, the testing of the vehicle before they actually get going, because that's a big part of their job for the security and safety reasons. Um, we, yeah, we, we need to be able to pull apart which areas that they might be struggling in uh, to be able to, to, to look at that and then try and find solutions for that if they're available. And if it's um, if you sort of do at the light vehicle, the normal sort of driver assessment process first, and then the heavy vehicle, um, is that means basically they're having to have two on-road assessments? Uh, more often than not. Yeah. Yeah, more often than not, it mightn't be a full uh, light vehicle assessment. Sure. Um, if we're not, if we're looking at the physical elements of it all, uh, it might be a shorter, condensed mm -hmm. light vehicle assessment. Mm -hmm. um, this is not worth taking somebody for a 50-minute drive and and uh, they're doing all of the driving of a car uh, really well, especially if it's a, it's a back injury or something else like that. Uh, and getting into a car, once they're seated in a car, there's no back issues whatsoever. It's, um, it's a physical demands of maybe getting in and out of a truck that's more of a, or hitching a trailer that's more of an issue. So you've got to look at those elements. So it might be a reduced uh, on-road assessment um, and a more physical uh, assessment in your pre-drive for your light vehicle. Uh, than, than maybe a cognitive or, or visual screen. And you mightn't dig as deep into those areas, um, but um, move that focus more onto, onto the truck further down the line, but it's more of a screening process. Sure, and with the um, heavy vehicle, the truck part of the assessment, how do you go about doing that? Good question. Um, it's, it's varied, I think, is yeah. why it's a, such a good question, um, because it all depends on the truck mm -hmm. uh, and what kind of vehicle that they're made from. It might not be a truck. It might be a forklift or it might be a bus or it might be a, uh, a, a smaller truck versus a, um, a, a multi-combination road train that you're looking at, uh, or it could be a piece of machinery. So um, we really need to understand what's involved in the vehicle first and involved in their job first. So um, that's why I said it's a good question because uh, we need to, to really understand the job first uh, or, the, or the, the task at hand first uh, and it can be extremely varied. Uh, and I don't think any assessment is the same when it comes to heavy vehicle or, uh, or machinery or, or, or even motorbike for that example. There's big differences between uh, motorbikes as well. Yeah. Between a Harley Davidson and a and a dirt bike, for example, there's a lot of uh, a lot of differences between riding those two different styles of bikes, and then you've got the uh, road bike in between as well. Yeah. So you've mentioned some of the other vehicles there. So the heavy vehicle driver assessment course does cover being able to assess other vehicles. Yeah. So the standard driver assessment course just covers being able to um, assess for light vehicles, but yeah. the heavy vehicle course also covers. Um, some of the other vehicles. So what, what other ones have you assessed? You mentioned motorbikes. Yeah, yep. so motorbikes. So we do quite a few, I've just done quite a few motorbikes, mm -hmm. um, looking at being able to get back on, on their bike. Quite often they've been involved in a motorbike accident, but yep. they're still super keen to be able to, uh, that doesn't phase them, nope. they're still super keen <laughs> to be on their bikes because yep. um, they enjoy that element of their of their life. And, you know, we're, we're not anybody to try and stop that. We're all about uh, creating yeah. Occupational freedom, independence, um, dignity so, of risk. Yeah, all of those type of things. Uh, yeah, we do look at that uh, element of risk factor, uh, yeah. whether especially if it's a cognitive area. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, yeah, it's it's about. I, I think the whole course, the the course of doing the heavy vehicle or, or alternative vehicles, is all about understanding how to analyze the task in a, in a different way yeah um, and I think I think that's what you get out of the course uh, taking what you learn in the light vehicle assessment and then being able to further develop your thinking as an occupational therapist 
to be able to pick apart different tasks in driving a little bit more yeah. uh, in depth and uh, being able to relate the client to those. And applying that a bit differently, isn't it? Because some yeah. of those, um, so I think with heavy vehicles, there's a there's different standards, different medical standards yeah. for commercial vehicles. Yeah, definitely right. But yeah. then for driving a forklift or driving a front end loader, there's no actual medical standards. Nope. Yeah. Right. So uh, it's yeah, it's about that element of risk for the, for the company a lot of the time. Mm. Uh, for for if it's an on-site assessment, yeah, uh, can they do their job? Because um, you're actually being asked, can they do their job in yes. a lot of those cases? Yes. Um, rather than can they drive, it's actually can they do their job, and you've got to be able to um, analyse that for the employers and the and the people that are uh, asking you to do the assessment and uh, being able to to demonstrate what capacity they can do their job. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Yeah. So what are some of the challenges that you've found oh. in relation to heavy vehicle drivers? That's lots. <laughs> There's lots of challenges involved because yeah. uh, it's such a technical part um, and you're getting away from a, a standard way of driving a car. We, you know, we're in a car today um, and most cars are fairly similar. Mm. Whether it's the, the major difference is a manual versus an automatic. but. Mm. I think um, it gets very technical depending mm. on the types of trucks or bikes or, or uh, machinery. Um, so that, that's always a big challenge, is mm. understanding what, what's involved in, in the job or the machine first. Um, and the more you do, the more familiar you get with road ranger gearboxes and, 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 the, and what's required to, to get in and out of trucks and check engines and um, do your safety checks or, or whatever it is. Uh, also for motorbikes as well, what's mm. involved in actually changing a gear up and down and what, uh, um, you know, what, what does the client need to be able to do to do that. So that's, I think the biggest challenge is, is getting familiar with, mm. with what's involved to be able to do that task uh, to start off with. So yeah, I think, and then yeah, you, you get to know the client through their pre-drive assessment yes. uh, already, so that doesn't really change. Yes. Uh, you already know your your physical elements. Yeah. Uh, you already know your cognitive elements and your visual elements. Uh, you've got to relate them to the medical standards, but that's what we would do normally. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest challenge is, is really understanding the machinery and what's involved. Mm. And just touching on motorbikes, because I know you've done a few and so have I. One of the things that I've found a bit challenging about motorbikes is sort of the um, what I kind of call a chicken and egg scenario which is that um, quite often if someone they say needs a modification to a motorbike mm -hmm. you sort of can't do an assessment before the motorbikes modified yeah I, I think we get that in um, in light vehicle assessments as well mm. too because uh, not every car has the modification yes, that true. you're after yeah so it's it's taking that element and putting it onto something else like a like a bike for example so yeah, yeah you're right with that chicken and egg scenario you've got to be really thorough in your assessment and um, you know be thinking about all the elements um, before seeing it mm. and, and making a an assessment of, of yeah you have to be really good at predicting yeah. uh, what the future might entail and and looking at those elements and trying to cover off all risk wherever possible yeah. but you can't always do that yeah. because there's a, there's a driver and an element and we can all have accidents but you're trying to reduce that risk wherever possible yeah. and you need to be able to know what modifications are available. Yeah and how is that with motorbikes because they're kind of yeah. almost anything can happen in some ways. Well true yeah um, in regards to balance and, and judgment and speed and um, yeah, they're on two wheels and that's not as stable and, and all kinds not of things contained. happen. Not contained. Um, yeah, so you know, it's, 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 and you're not with them either. No. Um, so you're, you're tagging along behind in a car or, or watching them do slow speed maneuvers in front of you. So yes. uh, you're not with them either. And yes. um, you don't have a driving instructor ready to apply a brake. So, <laughs> so you have to be really confident yeah. that uh, they can do what they need to do before before you're putting them into a risky situation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you need to you need to be a really thorough assessment. Yeah. And following on from that, um, I guess how have you found the licensing process for um, for, for these sorts of vehicles? So someone yeah. getting their license back. Yeah, I find the motorbikes tricky. Yeah. Uh, because um, yeah, I've, I've, I've uh, working with the licensing departments a bit trickier for a motorbike yeah. um, because. Um, in the past, it's all judgment has come down from from the manoeuvres that they they do in their 
in their training mm. for when they're trying to get their license in the first place. And um, yeah, I think it's a it's a lot more grey areas mm. in uh, doing a motorbike assessment because uh, I think the modifications that they need for gear changes and braking are new to a lot of people. Um, but um, and the heavy vehicle uh, elements as well, you know the the machinery is is different again because there is I mean you get cards to be able to say that you can um, operate machines and you've been through training but there's no I mean there's they they are licensed but it's not through the Department of Transport no. as such so uh, it's it's um, an element of judgment and uh, you're making those judgments as to whether they can go back to holding that license or not um, but the truck ones are very similar mm. to yeah to a light vehicle assessment very very similar uh, process yeah beautiful and so I guess what has been a success story for you in oh. this field someone you want to share about um, I think I think the I think the guys with with back injuries trying to get back into their job um, are good I mean they're, they're by the time you see them they're a little bit sick to death of the whole process and being off of work and they just yeah. want to be back with their mates working and yeah. being able to get out on the road again yeah so I think I think those assessments are, are are good to be able to say look if we just do some things a little bit differently to protect your back um, um, and you maybe climb into the cab this way rather than that way um, or uh, use your knees rather than bending at the hips to save your back um, and able to use arms and, and legs in different ways to be able to protect the back a bit more uh, then a light bulb going and goes off for them and they can and they can see the future so they're really good yeah and the guys on their motorbikes they just love it if they can get back on their bikes um, you know so an amputated leg and and they've you know they might have lost it in their accident for example um, in a motorbike accident but the, as soon as they get that feeling of the breeze going past them and, and their hands on on the, the bike again they, they you just you just know they're smiling yeah. Yeah, and inside their helmets and they're, they're, they're loving it um, I think they, they're the ones that you know why, if you make a client happy you're happy so any yeah. any time to do that yeah. yeah so those are the ones that kind of stick with you yeah yeah absolutely yeah. yeah just a guy the other week on his Harley Davidson and he just wants to get back out with his with his crew and 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 go riding um, you know out and about on the weekends and stuff so yeah they're, they're the ones that are good for me in regards to success stories, it's about their enjoyment more than, yeah, more than the physical elements of putting in a modification or something yeah. for me. Anyway. Yeah, sure. And I guess if um, if anyone that was watching this was wanting to get into doing heavy vehicle driver assessment, would you recommend it? What would you, any advice be? Yeah, I, look, I I would recommend it, even if you don't use it. Mm. I think it makes you a better assessor. Yeah. Um, because you do become a little bit more analytical yeah. because you can't like we were saying earlier you can't get into a modified vehicle uh, you've got to be able to figure out what the modifications are more often than not before you get to use them so yeah. you, you become better at analysis yeah. um, and and research and figuring out what what's uh, what's available to the client to be able to help them overcome their goals so I think if nothing else it makes you a better uh, driver train do take mm -hmm. uh, for your light vehicle assessments as well but it also allows you to look further afield I yeah. think you, you look at the bigger picture better yeah um, so you can ask those questions better in your in your pre-drive as well yeah it sounds like you're quite creative as well has to be quite sort of yeah more holistic and a bit broader and a bit more creative with some of your thoughts and ideas I, I think it helps you to be yeah. yeah, more along those lines. Yeah, you don't have to be, but I think you, it, I think it, I think it, it helps you to be more holistic. Um, yeah, a lot of people, uh, especially these days, have driving as part of their work, or yeah. uh, and and it quite often involves a different piece of machinery, whether it's you know, a forklift or in a factory or, or whatever uh, it might be. It, it can be a small piece of machinery right up to a big piece of uh, machinery and, and it allows you to be able to start thinking further ahead of not just what's involved in, in a car like we're sitting in today but what other elements you could be looking out for um, for any, anything that's got wheels on it really mm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that you might have to control. Yeah. 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 Cool. Alright well that was all the questions I had. Was there anything you thought that you would like to add? Oh, uh, I don't. I don't think so. I think we've covered. I think we've covered most of it. Um, 
I think, yeah, no, it's, it's a great place, great place to be working, and I'm really happy that I, I did it. Um, I was pushing for a long time to be trained up in the area, uh, and as soon as I, I did it, I just wanted to be out and about in those trucks, and, and it doesn't always come across uh, that quickly. The, the, uh, there's not that as and not as many assessments in this area. Um, I think there could be more. Mm. I think I think it's overlooked a lot. Yeah. Um, I think many people look at independence to be, a, a, you know, um, case managers and um, and doctors and so forth. Want to make sure that people can uh, drive drive safely to start off with. Mm. Um, and that one gets that gets ticked more often than not. But then looking deeper I think I think there's a lot of referrals missed in regards to uh, making sure people are safe or uh, looking at what could be available to help somebody work yeah. uh, I say work or get back into their previous roles because I, I think driving as well sometimes is um, like I think doctors do value that because it's that's so crucial to someone's independence in living in the community in Australia with being able to get out to the shops and things but quite often um, you know the process doesn't necessarily finish just because someone's got their car license back for them they may want to they may want to get their vehicle license yeah. back they may want to get their motorbike license back as well but that doesn't always seem to be on everyone's radar because if they no. can drive they can get to the shops they can get to their doctor's appointments and that's yeah. kind of enough <laughs> from a work cover point of view I think there, there could be increased opportunities for work mm. with a with a, an assessment mm. um, because once they're in a supported environment in the car mm. they, they, they could do uh, more work along those lines mm. quite often more often than not uh, and that's the same in a, in a truck as well mm. um, you know they mightn't be able to do the heavy lifting of their previous role yeah. uh, but once they're supported in a truck uh, and sitting in the sitting position I think there's more opportunities to be able to get back to work than maybe what some people are, uh, are thinking in the original assessments hmm. uh, and I think we have a lot to offer in that field uh, which may have been overlooked previously. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs>